Pursuant to Standing Order 38, the question that the House do now adjourn is deemed to have been made. The, minister, the member for Kenora Rainy River has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to a question given on July 22, 2014, by the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. The, minister has, the member has up to five minutes to debate the matter, and the Minister or Parliamentary Assistance has five minutes to reply. Member from Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday in question period, I asked this government if it will finally take action to address the systemic issues with jury selection the coroner cited as preventing a public inquest from going forward and call an inquest into the deaths of the seven youth who died while going to high school in Thunder Bay right away. We are here to debate this issue at length this evening because the answer I've received from both the ministers of Aboriginal Affairs and Children and Youth Services were unsatisfactory. But before I talk about the unsatisfactory response to this very important issue, I want to first take a moment to bring people up to speed on the issue itself. Over the past 10 plus years, seven students have died while far away from home attending high school in Thunder Bay. These youths left from their separate, six, six separate communities and Northern Reserves to access education and earn their high school diploma. Far from home and far from their friends and families, these young people suffered tragic deaths that have now been termed mysterious circumstances. The families and communities of these children have been waiting for years with unanswered questions as to what happened to their child and why. Investigating and finding the cause is important for two main reasons, to, pro to provide closure to these families and also to prevent future deaths. In September 2011, NAN, Nishinaabe Aski Nation, and Aboriginal Legal Services of Toronto called on the Ontario government to convene a commission of inquiry into these seven deaths. In response, the chief coroner made the decision to direct a joint inquest. At that time, assurances were made that the review and inquest would happen in an expeditious manner. But three years later, it appears that no progress has been made. And just last week, the chief coroner announced that the inquest that was scheduled to commence this fall in Thunder Bay was not going to go forward due to the underrepresentation of First Nations people on jury rolls, a long-standing issue examined by the Honourable Frank Iacobucci in his February 2013 independent review. There are essentially two main issues that I raised in my question. The first being getting answers for the families, communities, and all Northerners who have been waiting, whether this takes the form of a coroner's inquest or a public inquiry. Yesterday, in response to my question, the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs said the coroner, coroner I quote, has adjourned the inquest so that he can make arrangements to perhaps work with some of the recommendations in the Yakabuchi report, end quote. But when speaking with the coroner's office, we learned specifically that the inquest is to be announced and that the, coroner, uh, the coroner's inquest has not yet started. The only action the coroner has taken toward this inquest was a pre-inquest hearing to establish standing, not the start of an inquest. In other words, an inquest that hasn't convened cannot be adjourned. The minister's answer is false and misleading. The fact that the coroner's inquest hasn't yet commenced shouldn't preclude us from pursuing answers to the... I can't do that. The, the member from Kenora Rainy River will remove, remove that comment. I withdraw. The fact that the coroner's inquest, though, hasn't yet commenced shouldn't preclude us from pursuing answers through the creation of a public inquiry. I cannot stress it enough that families, communities, and all Northerners need insight into these deaths, and we need them quickly so that we can make the necessary changes to prevent further deaths from occurring. This is a public safety issue. The second issue that needs to be addressed is the larger issue of First Nations representation on juries. This is key to many proceedings in Ontario. Right now, there are other coroner's inquests that are put on hold because of the underrepresentation of First Nations on juries, and criminal matters are also being affected. In a recent case, a manslaughter conviction of a Grassy Narrows man was overturned by the Supreme Court of Canada due to the underrepresentation of reserve community members on Kenora's jury roll. This begs the question of why and how it is acceptable for the Attorney General to continue to convene criminal cases in the North using the same jury role when the coroner cannot? How is justice served in these criminal matters but not in other investigative matters? 
The answer is justice is not being served, and this government knows it. It has been aware of this issue for years, and it is beyond time for it to start taking steps to improve access to justice for First Nations people across this province. The fact is that the inquest hasn't even started, and it's being referred to as a gross breach of trust in failing to deliver on this important promise. So I want to reiterate that there are many groups that are calling for this show to get on the road, and it is incumbent upon this minister to take those steps and do so quickly. The Minister for Aboriginal Affairs has five minutes. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and thank you once again for the member opposite raising this important issue. About this time last year, I was in Thunder Bay where I had an opportunity to meet with the parents of the students uh, who were murdered. I remain deeply sympathetic to the families of the students, and this government recognizes that they deserve the utmost respect throughout this process. Mr. Speaker, the Thunder Bay inquest was announced in August 2012. While no formal date was identified for the inquest to begin, discussions had occurred initially for the inquest to start <clears throat> in the spring of 14. Given the complexity of the case and the volume of materials, the projected time start was changed to the fall of 14 without a specific set date. However, as you are aware, the Office of the Chief Coroner, which operates at arm's length from the Ministry and the Government, has determined that 2014, the 2014 Thunder Bay jury roll is not representative and will not be proceeding with inquests that involve Aboriginal community members in the Thunder Bay and Kornora districts for the remainder of 2014. I understand that the Coroner's Council had committed to the participants that the inquest materials, or the brief, would be available no later than October 31, 14, and that the inquest would be rescheduled. An evaluation of Thunder Bay's 2015 jury role will be undertaken by the Ministry of the Attorney General, the Office of the Chief Coroner, and First Nation groups to determine if the issues and concerns regarding Aboriginal representation have been resolved. Speaker, the decision of the Chief Coroner to postpone this particular inquest is outside the scope of my mandate. And any further questions about the Office of the Chief Coroner's decision should be directed to my colleague at the Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services. However, in general, I can tell you that our ministry is committed to working with the Ministry of the Attorney General to support its work on including individuals living in First Nation communities on Ontario's jury rolls. Juries are one of the cornerstones of the justice system. It is important that they reflect all elements of society, including First Nations. That's why our government commissioned Mr. Justice Yakabuchi to do a review in 2011. His review undertook an examination of the existing process in the selection of jury roles, held consultations with First Nations stakeholders, and evaluated best practices from Ontario and other jurisdictions. As recommended in the Akabuchi report, the only approach that will produce enduring results is a collaborative process between government and, the First Na and our First Nation partners. Consistent with that advice, in February 13, the Attorney General and I were pleased to announce the creation of an implementation committee and an advisory committee in response to the Akabuchi's two threshold recommendations. The 11-member Jury Review Implementation Committee is composed of a substantial First Nation membership. Led by Co-Chairs Nishnabe Aski Nation Deputy Grand Chief Alvin Fidler and Assistant Deputy Attorney General Urban Glassberg, the committee also includes current and former judges, lawyers and policymakers providing a wide range of perspectives across the justice sector. We have also announced the co-chairs of the Aboriginal Justice Advisory Group, which will provide the Attorney General with advice on the broader justice issues affecting First Nations. Furthermore, the Ministry of the Attorney General is creating a new position, the Assistant Deputy Attorney General, who will be dedicated to addressing Aboriginal issues. The new uh, Assistant Deputy Attorney General, Aboriginal issues, will, in collaboration with Aboriginal peoples, lead the development of new programs and services for Aboriginal peoples involved in the criminal justice system. Mr. Speaker, our government is taking meaningful steps towards effecting a real positive change in the way First Nations people participate in Ontario's justice system, specifically in, in enhancing their participation on juries. 
Mr. Speaker, my colleague, the Attorney General, and I, and this government, will continue to move forward in implementing the recommendations of the Yakabuchi Report, and we will continue to work to ensure that First Nations are adequately represented in the Ontario justice system. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, may I just correct my record? Uh, um, I used the expression uh, murdered. Uh, I should have used the expression students uh, passed away uh, or are dead. That, that finding of murdered has not been found yet, so I ask to correct my record in that regard. Thank, thank you. Thank you. This House stands adjourned until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning.